My name is Robert Cowan from Square Mile Systems, and in this video I'm going to show you some of the techniques, hints and tips that we cover in our Visio for IT Professionals training course, including some you won't find in any of the books. It covers various standard Visio features and some free add-ins which can be tremendous time savers. Many of you will have used the built-in network symbols stencil. I have shapes like router, switch, And each of these shapes, the text moves around with the shape, but the text is always below. These shapes do allow us to draw diagrams like this, drag and drop, and the connections all move as appropriate. But what happens if I want to get a diagram like this, where the text for different shapes is in slightly different positions? And I want it to behave like this. So that I drag the shape, the text goes with it. What I don't want is this, so that the text and the shape are separate and need to be moved together. In the course, we'll cover how to do this. Some of you will have drawn rack diagrams using the built-in rack-mounted equipment stencil, and manufacturer provided stencils for each of, for all of their equipment. For example, here we have Dell. We can drag and drop that in, and it slots in very nicely. Notice this particular shape you can't make it bigger. It's fixed. The behavior is fixed by the manufacturer. Where did I get these shapes? I went to the Visio Cafe website where most manufacturers put all their shapes. If you look at a standard switch shape, it's a generic shape. And I can resize it a little bit. But it's rather fixed in its behavior, a bit like, and it's slightly more flexible than the uh, Dell shapes, but it's still rather fixed in, in its behavior. We will show you how to take that sort of shape and be able to do things like create your own version like this. And you can also create simple patch panels. You'll notice here that all the ports are numbered individually and that I have connections and I can move these between the appropriate ports. And when I move the patch panel, it stays connected to the relevant port on the switch. We will show you how to take a spreadsheet with a list of cabinet details, for example, name, width, depth, and some other attributes, and combine that with a basic background. For example, here, an array of floor tiles, walls, logos, title blocks, and other relevant information. A couple of quick actions, and you can add a shape for all of the cabinets onto the page. It will end up like this. But you'll notice that all these uh, rectangles are exactly the same size. With the right utility, it's very straightforward to process that in a few clicks, and you have all your cabinets laid out in rows, and each of the shapes is sized appropriately. A little bit more tidying up, making sure of precise positioning, and you have all of your cabinets aligned on the right background, on the right floor tiles. Notice that each of the shapes has data associated. So data for a particular cabinet, and here data for a PDU. We also show you how to create links. So by clicking there, I go to another tab in the same document, and get a detailed picture of that cabinet. Click on the server, and in this instance, it will take me to a network topology diagram. If I click there, then I come back to that particular server. If I look at the cabinet itself, you'll notice there is actually a link here too, back of cabinet photo. So that's taking me to an actual picture, in this case shown in Internet Explorer. We also cover how to use Visio as a dashboard. Here we have an alternative view of computer room, and we have a way of bringing out different types of information on the same diagram. I can color all the cabinets by their function, network, server, etc. I can look at their power status to see which are exceeding their power limits, or I can look at space utilization to see which are getting really quite full. We also show you how to create this simple set of radio buttons here. This actually requires a little bit of visual basic code. 
But by adding these to your diagrams, you can really make them simple and straightforward for your users to use. They don't need to be Visio experts. Many of our clients create rack diagrams in Visio with one page per rack. With a couple of clicks, we can bring out details about all the equipment in the racks. In this case, the type of the equipment and its IP address. And we've applied that to all of the tabs in the document. And again, this took a couple of clicks with a free add-in that we show you how to use on the course. Here is an architecture view showing switches and routers. If we zoom in, we see that the icons are labeled, in this case, the routers on the bottom and the switches on the top, somewhat inconsistent. With a couple of clicks, we made everything consistent, and we've also, again, brought out things like the IP address. We cover diagrams such as service types, where we might have a particular business service, ISA payment, depending on applications, databases, virtual and physical servers. Again, a free add-in allows you to do things like this. Filter out and hide all the equipment that's not connected to this particular box, this virtual server. Alternatively, it's very straightforward to highlight all the parents of that particular box. So all the items, the configuration items that would be affected if there was a problem to this box. And then finally, we show you how you can publish your Visio diagrams for the web to allow other people within your organization to easily view them without necessarily having a Visio license. Here's the same computer room that we've seen earlier, but in this case, it has a web page but each of the cabinets has its own set of data. Here's a view of a rack diagram. You'll notice that the individual servers and other items also have their own data. If I click on an individual server here, I can link to an external application. In this case, the application shows me where the server is stored and also things like the connectivity. I can click on an individual port from the server and do a port trace. So there you have it, a fast-paced overview of some of the things we cover in the course. The testimonial you see here is from one of our delegates who felt he got excellent value. This was in spite of his previous seven years of regular Visio use. He rather wished he'd done it earlier. You will find the course overview on our website at the address shown here or in the comments for this video, including a timetable of upcoming public courses. We've also run custom versions of the course and related workshops on-site for organizations around the world and are able to do sessions online if that is most appropriate. Just get in touch. We look forward to hearing from you.